And I was hired into K-Force to start a leadership development program. So the mm-hmm. company invested in a leadership development program and it put a premium on it. And of course, you know, my Marine background, it's just baked into us that you're either leading people or teaching them how to become leaders. So I, I'm big in mentorship development, held book studies with my groups and all of that. I, I tried to leave people better leaders than I ever was. And, and several of them have gone on to achieve things in the corporate world way, way beyond the level I were. And I'm proud of that, you know. Right. That said, um, and most military guys were so surrounded with formal leadership training and an ethos of leadership. Uh, all you had to do was look around and see good role models. And we had a couple of bad ones, but for the most part, excellent role models. Like, that's what you do. That's how you do it. I was shocked to come out into the business world and realize that leadership development is almost non-existent, formal leadership development. So right. I, you know, I, and I trick CEOs. I go in and talk to them and say, well, what's your budget next year? Your capital is, oh, we're putting $50 million into machinery. We got this. And then I'm like, that's awesome. Awesome. You know, I get them saying yes. And then I'm like, well, so what's, what's the line, you know, how much are you investing in leadership development? And you know what I'm going to tell you? It's like nothing. zero, big, big, nothing. And I'm like, guys, you know, this is the, you know, you're putting all this into your your equipment and all of that, and you're not investing in the people that are going to execute. And so it's counterintuitive. So I mean, I'm getting long winded. I want to ask you this. I think a lot of people listening to this podcast will say, Mike, that's the situation I'm at. My company offers nothing. And I would say that 99 out of 100 in the business world are going to be in that situation. Right. It's not going to come from their company. What do they do? Because the onus is always on, even if your company provides training, you're still going to have to do a lot of self-development. So what words of advice, what did you do? You know, company doesn't provide it. What do you do to propel yourself up the leadership competency ladder, so to speak? Sure. I had a leader back probably... 15 years ago at this point, uh, Greg Pegliari, I know you know Greg. Um, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. But Greg said, I want you to put a professional development plan together. I'm like, okay, what does that mean? You know, so I'm Googling it, trying to find examples online. Um, but what it came down to, and, and I share this a lot within K-Force because so many people come asking this question of me. Um, and I share my personal plan, but I built this, personal development plan, Mike, that, that says, you know, what do I want to be known for at the end of the day? And, you know, there's certain things there and what am I good at and where are there areas where I want to continue to develop? What are those? Um, You know, what roles could I see myself going into at at K-Force thinking ahead? Like, could this path take me over here, over here and, and giving some options and, you know, what are my goals for the year and what are the things that I've accomplished over the last uh, 12 months or a year or so. And I reviewed this plan with Greg at the time quarterly. It wasn't me coming and saying, hey, it's time to promote me, but it was me saying, all right, you know, in our one-on-one this week, where I'd like to review my plan with you. Here's the progress I've made. Here's some things that I'm doing. To your point, career development, it's not a huge budget for that, but there's things you can do on, on your own you know, podcasts or reading or uh, finding a mentor or investing in this area or that or lots of things. But but this plan kept me on track, Mike. It it kept me focused on where I wanted to continue to develop, you know, where I was eager to share my experience or, you know, new roles that I could be primed for. So that worked very well for me. And I have those plans going back to 2011. Um, And so I've seen the progression over time. And um, I think they're a big part of of the success formula for me, because it wasn't just I I think I'm ready for this role or wasn't just I want to learn these skills, but it was kind of all encompassing from a leadership perspective. And it allowed me, you know, to be front and center with my leader at that time. And then he could offer feedback and challenge me as well. That would be that would be one thing. Another thing, and this is probably in the last five to seven years, Mike, but a girlfriend of mine asked me to be a part of her personal board of directors. She is an IT executive and uh, we call it our PBOT. I had to Google it again 
thank goodness for Google, because I didn't know what it was, but it was a big thing coming out of GE. And, you know, there's a lot of people that use this personal board of directors concept. But for yeah. me, it pulled a group of uh, folks together that had very diversified backgrounds. One's in insurance. You know, one was in packaging. One was in IT. I came from the staffing industry and we would have topics or we do. We have topics or we have you know, if there's a business problem and we come together to challenge each other and offer perspective. For me, yeah. I've been at K-Force for almost 20 years. It's all that I know. So having mm -hmm. others offer me, you know, thoughts or ideas on, you know, the business challenges I'm having, that has been something that I can do um, organically. It doesn't cost a lot of money and it gives me access to people, you know, um, to help weigh in on some of the things that I'm working on. Um, you know, those are, those are a couple of things that I'm doing besides reading and, you know, some of the basics. Um, but those two things have been critically important to my success over the years.